זזה בלעדיי, קטן עליי, פשוט תהיי איתי בדי. מה את שותקת? תגידי משהו. אם את הולכת, עוד לא עם מישהו. ואם את זזה בלעדיי, קטן עליי, פשוט תהיי... Hi, everyone. Welcome. We're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you all so much for being here. I'm so excited for this webinar and our time together tonight. Um, I want to start by going ahead and introducing myself. My name is Annie Fortnow, and I am the Engagement Manager at JumpSpark Atlanta. Um, just to review, JumpSpark drives innovative teen programming out of the Jewish Federation of Greater Atlanta, and we are excited to step into the role of providing more Israel opportunities for Atlanta's Jewish teens. We're really thrilled to launch the Atlanta Israel Gap Year Scholarship, which is an opportunity for Atlanta Jewish teens to receive a $10,000 scholarship toward a Gap Year program in Israel. And it's an amazing opportunity. There's also opportunities to gain $15,000 towards your Gap Year in Israel if you do some kind of volunteering or work in the Jewish community during the summer between your gap year and going back into college. Studies have found that an exploratory gap year between high school and college often contributes to a boost in performance when students enter college. Additionally, students who participate in gap year programs are often more mature, self-reliant, independent, and employable than non-gap year students. At a time when the college experience could be a virtual one, a gap year in Israel guarantees an international communal living and growth experience that simply can't be beat. The diverse gap year programs that are part of the scholarship span a range of focus areas, cities, and religious affiliations. There's an Israel gap year experience for everyone, and we will help you identify the one that's right for you. And to help us do that tonight, we have Alyssa Gaon from Masa Israel Journey, and she's the Director of Academic Recruitment for North America. She'll help us learn why a gap year in Israel can be a life-changing experience for you. So I'll go ahead and pass it over to Alyssa. Awesome. Thank you, Andy, for that introduction. Hi, everyone. I'm really excited to be here. And I'm excited to share these opportunities with you. I'm going to start by um, explaining really all the benefits of going on a gap year. And then I'm going to do a deep dive in what it means to go on a gap year in Israel and how it can, like Andy said, how it can change your life. So... I'm gonna start sharing my screen and we can uh, we can rock and roll. All right, so Annie just thumbs up, screen sharing good, everything's working, awesome. Okay, great. Okay, so who am I? My name is Alyssa Gaon and I am like Annie said, the director of academic recruitment. That's just a fancy way of saying that I help people study abroad in Israel. The study abroad space is my specialty, um, but tonight we're gonna be talking all about gap year programs. Um, MESA really does have a range of program options from anywhere in between um, high school and college. While you're in college, you can study abroad and after college, amazing career development opportunities post-grad as well. So we kind of have programs for every stage of your journey. Um, and I actually did a five month long internship and it was amazing. And I will share a few photos from my experience on the ground in a Jolana program. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to share opportunities with you. And here we go. All right, so what is Masa? So first and foremost, um, Masa means journey in Hebrew, and that's what this is. This really is a journey. Um, we are the leader in immersive international career development and leadership experiences in Israel for young Jewish adults. Almost all of our programs are for people who are 18 to 30. Um, it's that time in your life when you're really becoming a young adult and expanding your horizons. Um, and we really specialize in life-changing, long-term immersive experiences. They give you leadership development um, and independence and so many other phenomenal things. So what is Masa? As I just explained, um, we are the leader and we offer four to 12 month long programs. So almost every one of our programs is at least, typically in the gap space, at least six months. We have very few gap programs that aren't at least six months. But on average, most people either do one semester or two, so either six months or a full academic year, which is around 10 months. Um, and we show up in two pretty fundamental ways. We give you grants and scholarships to help you pay for it on top of everything that you'll get from the amazing Atlanta Federation. And we also provide incredible programming on the ground once you actually get to Israel to have the experience itself. So what is a gap year? 
Um, this year is devoted to understanding yourself, meeting friends, growing personally, but really also growing professionally. Um, it's that time in between high school and college to really explore. Um, usually there is some work involved, whether it's an internship experience or volunteer work that you might want to do, taking classes, you can get college credits. Um, but basically the point is really about growth, personal development, and really understanding who you are as a person before you just dive right into college. There are a lot of amazing benefits to doing a gap year. Um, statistically, there are so many benefits, um, but really it just prepares young adults for self-directedness, maturity. Um, Annie kind of mentioned a bunch of these things at the beginning of the call, um, but um, students who return from a gap year are likely to have much higher GPAs than those people, than those who do not do a gap year. Also, people who take gap years are also much more likely to secure a job after college, um, to perform better academically, to um, have more sh shinier resume skills, um, and just in general, um, it enhances your economic, social, and cultural capital um, that has a lot of advantages in the competitive education and in the labor market. So overall, just generally speaking, um, yeah, you have um, a lot of skills that you gain while you're on these programs. Um, all right, I see a question in here. I am going to save um, some of the questions until the very end because there's a really good likelihood that I'll probably answer them as I continue talking, but I won't forget and I'll make sure that any other questions that um, come in will get answered. I will not forget you. Um, so yeah, basically there's a lot of phenomenal benefits to doing a gap year. Just a fun fact that I thought most of you guys might want to know, um, which is there are currently in Israel, as we speak on gap year programs, over 150 participants who have deferred Ivy League colleges to go to Israel. So that means they got in, they got accepted into the Ivy Leagues, they decided to defer a gap year, I mean, defer college for a year to be able to take that gap year. Um, this is actually from Harvard University's website. I literally just copied and pasted this paragraph. It straight up says, we encourage admitted students to defer enrollment for one year to travel, pursue a project, or to spend time in another meaningful way. Um, because they know that there's a much higher likelihood that when you get back from your experience in Israel or wherever you are in the world, that you're going to probably be more independent, self-sufficient. You might even learn a new language. You might be a lot more worldly, a lot more cultured. Um, and there are just so many added benefits to the maturity level that comes with entering um, your first year in university, um, having had so much life experience living independently somewhere else in the world. So um, for anybody wondering, well, what about college and getting in and academics? The college process still happens. You still apply, you still get in, um, you just do a deferral. And over a thousand young people decided to go to Israel on a gap year this year and deferral had never been easier. So it's not as complicated as it seems and we help with every step along the way. So we did, the American Gap Year Association did a survey to understand why students decided to take a gap year? What was the motivation behind it? And overwhelmingly, young people want to travel and they want to experience other cultures. Um, they want to grow personally. They want to get life experience. They want to leave the bubble of the familiar and experience a new culture and a new environment um, to just get some real hands-on worldly experience. Um, they also kind of wanted a break from academia after 12 years of nonstop learning, although many of our programs do have academic components to them. Um, and the other one was just exploring study options. There's no better way to understand what you should major in than by having an internship in that field to really get a taste for what it's like in the real world. Um, so this is what motivates most young people. Um, and our experiences on the ground in Israel meet almost every single one of these bubbles. Um, I mean, in every single way. So, and you'll see that as I continue. And then in terms of self-reported impact, um, once these students have gotten back from Israel, and this is again from the Gap Year Association website, they're the official Gap Year Association of the United States. They do yearly reporting and statistics on different results of taking gap years. And the number one thing for sure is that it increased maturity, increased self-confidence, help people develop as a person, also increased readiness for college, 
say 73%, like for sure. So um, it's definitely, um, most of it is a personal, a lot of it is global engagement and, and a very large portion of it as well is career oriented, which is pretty exciting stuff. So um, there's no doubt that it will help you grow and develop as a person. Okay, so all that's fine and well, that's about gap year in general. Um, but let's talk about what a gap year looks like on Massah in Israel. What does it mean? What does it look like? So let's get into it and I'll give you all the details. So Massah has what we call core DNA, okay? So what that means is it doesn't matter what program you go on, whether you Can you hear me okay? Yes, yeah. totally good, thank you. Okay, cool, sorry, my AirPods cut up for some reason. Um, whether you decide to go and study abroad or you decide to do a gap year or at post-college experience, all of our programs have a standard that we set, we call like, we measure excellency, okay? And all of our programs, no matter what type they are, have to meet our standards. And those standards include educational opportunities. So weekly educational field trips and programming to do a deep dive into the Israeli culture. Hebrew language classes are a huge component of it. Every single program offers Hebrew lessons, um, trips around Israel, cultural immersion, um, medical insurance, staff support. There's a whole network that we build. Um, also unlimited transportation once you get to Israel. Um, almost all of our programs include housing. So there are a lot of components. Um, and in order to be part of our network and one of the programs that we offer, you have to offer all of these components. So we make sure that every year our programs, they don't just automatically get to be approved in our system, that we go through an approval process every single year. So we can vet the companies and make sure that the programs are up to standard um, and up to our level of excellency. A huge component too of being in Israel is that you're building an international network. We don't just offer programs to people from North America. So while we do have programs where the majority of the young participants are from the United States, um, many of our programs have participants from all over the world. When I was in Israel, I had roommates from Argentina, Brazil, France, Germany. Um, it's a great way to build your network and meet people from other countries and really get to make friends in other places all over the world. So um, just something to keep in mind. So I mentioned earlier that Masa offers scholarships and um, funding, but hands down, I would say one of the most impactful, life-changing parts of the program when I was on the program was the Masa programming that I was able to attend. Um, we offer programming on the ground to get participants to do leadership development. Um, and obviously this was pre-COVID. I actually attended a leadership seminar. I got to host a TED talk. Um, obviously these big events like this aren't happening right now because of COVID. However, that being said, we still are offering leadership development, how to interview for future jobs, resume writing workshops, a lot of professional development. Um, and the nice thing is you might be enrolled in one particular gap year program, but you might have friends on another gap year program. And the cool thing about it is that regardless of what program you're on, anybody who's on a Masa program in general can attend our programming. So a lot of people meet um, other people that they never would have gotten to meet from other programs um, by attending the Masa programming, which is pretty cool. I just wanted to give you like a taste for two seconds of my experience on a Masa program. Um, you travel together. These are my roommates. We would have Shabbat dinner together every Friday um, on our balcony. We did everything together. And these people became my family while I was living in Israel. I didn't have any family. I didn't know Hebrew before I came. And no, you do not need to know Hebrew in order to be on one of our programs or to have an amazing time. It's not required. Um, everything, all the programming's in English, your internships and whatever you decide to do will be in English. Um, but you know, the people you meet, the global network you make, all of it um, is what creates such an unbelievably fun environment. You're going to be with these people every day, whether you are spend the first two weeks quarantining or, you know, for all we know, hopefully, God willing, knock on wood in the fall, the restrictions will be lifted. Um, but this was when I was on my program, we got to travel, we got to go on fun adventures together. Yes, it's serious in that you're getting all these amazing life skills, you're getting professional development, you are learning, you're taking classes, you're getting college credit, you're interning, you're volunteering. But 
it's also fun. You're getting to hang out with people. You're getting to go out and, and enjoy Israel and all Israel has to offer. So um, don't forget that while it is a hugely important, special time in your life, it's also really, really fun. So this is kind of what the leadership training looks like now in, in like a post-corona COVID world. Um, the programming is still happening. It's just done with masks, masks on, social distancing. Um, we're being much more careful with our programming. So now when people go to programming, they're wearing masks. They're very careful. There's temperature checks at every single programming event that we have. Um, a lot of our community is going above and beyond to make sure that we meet all of this health and safety standards and guidelines that the health ministry sets. And all of our program providers are given an update from our team, our security officer who's in touch with the Israeli government every two days. So that our programs are updated every two days on what's happening on the ground, um, safety procedures, protocols, it changes by the day, um, but we're very connected to our organizers that provide the experiences and they relay that information to the participants directly. Um, if parents wanna know what's going on, they can always reach out to our team, but 99% of the time your kids can just give you updates. It's not that complicated. Um, your kids can still text you while they're in Israel and give you updates. Um, because things change so quickly, we try not to email parents every two days, but obviously if you check in with us, we're more than happy to tell you what's going on on the ground. Um, our programming adapted pretty seamlessly. Um, Israel has, well, let me take a sip of water. Israel has this warm weather advantage. So um, because Israel is such a phenomenally warm and beautiful country, a lot of the programming was, be able, was shifted to be outside. So initially university classes or some of the internships that were inside, a lot of it was able to be shifted to be outside, outside programming. Um, groups of 20 people are allowed to gather outside in Israel currently. Um, so um, that's a really huge advantage that we didn't really have the luxury of experiencing this winter in the States, especially since I know there is snow covering like, most of the country at the moment. So there is something really nice about the fact that the weather is nice, you can be outside and it's less scary and you're not having to be inside with other people all the time. Also, one of the things I think at Massa that we are the most proud of that is incredible is the fact that every single person on a gap year has received both of their shots. Um, every single participant has been vaccinated. Not only have our gap year participants been vaccinated, but over 70% of all the people we have brought to Israel have been vaccinated, which is over 5,000 young adults between 18 and 30. Um, it's really incredible what the programs have done and pretty much every single young person who's in Israel at the moment has received a vaccine. So they're able to be together and they don't have to worry about getting sick and they don't have to worry about if they travel, will they get sick? Um, it's pretty remarkable. So it's also really good PR. <laughs> like you go to Israel, there's a really good chance that you're more likely to get a vaccine in Israel than you will be anytime soon in the States. So just something to think about. All right, so there are three types of gap year programs that we offer that are like the most prevalent, most common. Um, academic, meaning you can spend freshman year in Israel. Um, we have traditional gap year programs, which the majority of you most likely will go on. Um, and then special interest, very niche specific um, types of programs that we offer depending on your interest level and like what you're into. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a breakdown. Um, this is in no particular order, okay? Um, this year, Young Judea Year Course brought the most amount of participants to Israel. There are over 250 uh, 18, 19, and 20 year olds um, came to Israel. Now, the reason I mentioned 19 and 20 is because, well, gap year typically refers to that time in between high school and university. There was a lot of people who were supposed to be experiencing freshman year or even sophomore year and their classes went online everything got messed up they're only 19 or 20 and they realized that spending a meaningful year in israel where they could also get college credit was so much better than taking online classes and being home with their parents all the time so a lot of young people who were enrolled in university decided to de like take not de-enroll they still enrolled but they either took their classes online but in israel through during one of the um, gap year programs, or they decided to de-enroll altogether and just get college credit through the program. Um, Young Judea Year Course offers housing in both Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. You can do one semester or two. And usually if you spend Jerusalem, you know, first semester in Jerusalem, second semester in Tel Aviv, you swap halfway through. That's usually the model for most full-length year-long programs, depending on the program. 
Um, and pretty much I would say Young Judea, even though Young Judea is part of like the Young Judea camp system, about 70% of the people that go on the Young Judea gap year program are, did actually never went through the youth movement, never went to the camp. So you don't have to you don't have to have gone to one of the Young Judea camps in order to go to the program. And within a week, everybody's friends with each other anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, the premise of this program, they do have international add-ons. They do have special tracks that you can do. Like they have a tech track. They also have a like McGinn DeVita Dome, like medical track. Um, I can answer specific questions about the programs later. I don't want to take too long because I have a few to get through. Um, but Young Judea is like, there's a there's a Jewish learning component. Um, there's a rabbi on staff, but it's it's has a very crunchy granola camp vibe like playing guitar at night, hanging out. Like it's a very, very laid back, fun um, gap year where you can get up to 30 college credits. So you can get up to 15 credits per semester. It depends what university you go to, whether or not they accept the credits. I know Binghamton, for example, accepts 100% of credits. Um, some schools accept zero credits, like University of Chicago, I think accepts no credits. So you have to check with your um, school first to see whether or not they would accept the credits. But you can take classes. A lot of the classes are going to be um, your standard general education credits, so your social sciences and your humanities um, and all the classes that you have to take anyway. And you, your Hebrew classes definitely can count as a foreign language. Aardvark is like the second, the, the, the program we had the second most amount of people on this year, um, over 200 young adults from across North America and the war around the world um, came on Aardvark Israel. Again, Aardvark is very similar to Young Judea in that it has program offerings in both Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. Um, one of the biggest differences is that Young Judea actually has the Isra like Israeli young people, I forget what group they're from. They're one of the Mechino, but they actually live in the same building. Whereas Aardvark is just people from the Aardvark program. So if you go in Young Judea, you'll live in the building. Um, and in the building, there are also 18 year old young Israelis who are also living with you, who are also on, on their version of a gap year in Israel called the Mechina, which means to prepare. And it's their year to prepare for the army. So if you wanna learn Hebrew and have Israeli roommates, Young Judea is definitely the program for you. Aardvark is strictly just the people on the program, live in the housing. Um, you really live like a local and they specialize in internships. So if you want an intern or volunteer or and get college credit, but really focus on career development and figuring out what you wanna major in, Aardvark can hook you up with unbelievable internships. Um, Aardvark has a bunch of different extension programs, which I'm gonna talk about in one second. Um, but basically the other cool thing about this program is there are international add-ons. They have three in the spring and three in, three, three in the fall. And um, there are special interest experiences that you can have, like you can do water sports. You can, there's a lot of cool add-ons um, that you can check out on their website. So one of the tracks that Aardvark offers is a program called Big Idea. Um, the Big Idea Tech Track is incredible in that um, it's a full coding boot camp. So you're going to be doing a full coding and programming boot camp. Um, all of the coding and programming learning is done in Jerusalem. And then in spring semester, when you're in Tel Aviv, you actually use all of your coding and programming skills. Um, basically being a front end and mobile app developer and and you'll will be learning like html javascript ux and ui android development um all the things you can imagine in the tech space um, and you'll be using those skills to actually work for a high tech company um, and you'll have an internship where you get to build stuff um for a high tech company so it's really really incredible um and basically you get to meet entrepreneurs and CEOs from incredible tech startups and it's just great exposure to the tech world. If you're interested in computer science at all, this is like the best program you could consider. Um, stepping away from Aardvark is the um, Nativ program. Nativ is the conservative movement program in Israel. It is grounded in conservative Judaism. There are Shabbat tones on the weekend. It's all about um, creating Jew future Jewish leaders and really with an emphasis and focus on independence. Um, you would be living in Jerusalem for all 10 months. And um, it's just a really phenomenal program. If you are conservative and you feel comfortable with that background, then this is definitely the right program for you. One last aardvark one, I should have put it with the other aardvark ones. 
Um, Aardvark, in addition to the tech track, Aardvark also have, has what they call a year of service track. So you would spend, now this program, the cost of this program is the cost for a full year is the same cost as the regular Aardvark track just for one semester. So it's half the price of the full, it, even though it is a full year because it's volunteer based and not in Tel Aviv, it's in Haifa, um, it's half the price. Um, and basically you get to do any volunteer projects you want. They do not have to be like labor intensive, like this photo, it's just a photo. Um, you can do agricultural, um, you could work with kids, you can work with people with special needs, you can give back, you can teach English, you can do um, coexistence work, you can help asylum seekers and refugees. There are so many ways you can contribute to Israeli society. So this is like the ultimate volunteer experience. Um, and it's just an incredible way to give back. And it's a really altruistic, amazing program. Um, the Chavruta Gap Year program is through the Shalom Hartman Institute. Um, and it is really meant for um, people from North America and Israelis, young adults from just North America and Israel to come together to learn. Um, it is a Judaic studies program, but um, what's really cool about it is, is that it's completely pluralistic. So it doesn't matter if you're completely secular, if you're a reform, if you're conservative, if you're ultra ultra or, or orthodox, it doesn't matter. It's about a meeting of the minds to come together to talk about what it means to have a Jewish future. Um, if you like to learn, if you like text study, if you like to be challenged, if you like to think critically, this is the ultimate program for you. There is an internship component multiple times a week. You will have a physical activities where you're able to go on hikes and experience the country. Um, you'll be learning. Um, it is a very structured program. So if you like the idea of having structure and having a very like a set schedule, um, then this is the program for you. If I could do any program, if I could go back to my gap year and do any program, I would do this program because it has such an incredible learning component. And it's not just like learning Torah all day long. It really is about understanding the history of the Jewish people um, with a really incredible critical thinking perspective. It's almost like a college class in a way in, in the way that they go about teaching and explaining and learning and debating. And it's just an amazing program. So I would definitely say to check out this program if you, like I said, if you like structure and you love to learn. Um, grants and scholarships. So that's just like a, a sample of the programs that we offer. I know that um, the Jewish Federation in Atlanta is um, offering scholarships for specific programs and each of those programs is part of, um, you can receive funding for them. We do have a longer list of programs, but this these are like the top most relevant programs I wanted to share with you. But of course, if you guys have questions, I'm always happy to share more program opportunities later. In addition to the funding that you will get from the Federation, Massa also offers both a standard grant, which is around $800. So if you're Jewish and you're eligible, it's usually around 800 US dollars, plus an additional needs-based scholarship depending on your family's level of need. So we've given out thousands of dollars in funding for, for, for certain families depending on their need level. Otherwise, if you don't have a significant need, um, we have the standard grant, which everybody will receive. And I can go into detail with you one-on-one um, -on -one another time if you have questions about it. Um, just to you know, put things into perspective, while the rest of the world was shutting down and things were closing and people came home from study abroad from all these places all over the world, um, Israel and Massah really did make the impossible possible. Um, over 7,000 people have entered the country since September. Um, Every, like I said, almost every single person on our programs in general received the, a vaccine. And we really did an unbelievable job of just bringing people together at a time when nobody was traveling and nobody was coming together. So we're really proud of that. And it's so cool. And I can only imagine after a year of learning and pivoting and adjusting how much better these programs will be this fall after like a year of figuring it out. Um, this is my contact info. I'll leave this screen up for a second so that you can um, check it out. Uh, you can write it down, take a screenshot. Um, I have a call scheduler, so I'm actually going to put my scheduling link in the chat. Um, I don't know why it says that the um, Chavruta, it says applications are closed. Um, I need to double check that because they're definitely not closed. Um, we can, I will look into that for sure. That's a really good um, question. Um, do, 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 do. 
hold on, let me um, just put my, I'm just reading through some of these questions. Um, I'm gonna put my scheduler in the chat right now. This week um, is a little busy for me. It's a crazy week at Massa, um, but you can look on my schedule and see um, any other time next week that's available. Schedule a call with me, copy and paste my link into your browser. Um, I love helping people. I consider myself a program matchmaker. So if you connect with me and tell me what your goals are and what you're looking to get out of an experience, I can connect you to the perfect Israel program. And that's all I got. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much, Alyssa. Really incredible information and like makes me want to go to Israel and take a gap year. Incredible. Um, so exciting. I have a few questions for you if that sounds good and we can kind of go through them. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to post them in the Q&A. If you're tuning in on Facebook Live, I'm monitoring it there too. So feel free to comment us any questions and we'll get them answered for you tonight. I'm also happy to answer any questions you have about the Atlanta Israel Gap Year Scholarship. Um, if anything comes up for you, feel free to post those questions to us as well. Um, one question that we got ahead of time before this webinar is about high holidays in Israel and what that looks like on a gap year program. And maybe if you want to elaborate on like all Jewish holidays and what that looks like. Yeah, for sure. So every gap year program celebrates the holidays in some capacity. Um, Usually how it works is the program itself will do some sort of usually all of our like interesting learning educational weekly programming revolves around the holiday. So we would come usually they come together and you would do some sort of service there's always like an optional service it's never mandatory but it's always there if you want it. Um, there's always some sort of food dinner involved I mean, obviously not in Yom Kippur but like every other holiday there's like a ridiculous amount of food that the programs usually provide. Um, there is celebratory options available. The other thing too is Masa does work with a couple different outside organizations that can connect you to Jewish experiences. So for example, um, Kahal is an, is an external organization that we work with. They offer the ability for anybody traveling anywhere in the world, any young adult, the ability to have a Jewish experience abroad. They can connect you with a host family. They can connect you with a Shabbat dinner. They can connect you with a Passover Seder. So they have contacts on the ground in Israel and not just in Israel, but if you decide to like study abroad in like Bologna, Italy, they know people there too. So their whole premise of their organization is to finding people. Um, and it's funny because you'd think in Israel, there's just Jewish experiences around every corner, but because there are so many, it's it's easy to get lost in knowing where to go and what to do. So we definitely partner with a lot of outside organizations to help people connect with Jewish opportunities. Also local Chabad's like are the best because they have the best food, everything's always free and they would they just love community and everything's in English. Um, so I would say typically a lot of programs just offer programming directly to the participants. It's part of the experience. It's always part of the experience. But if you want to go above and beyond and have even deeper, more meaningful experiences, you can always go with like an outside org and um, connect. Like I said, I did Hanukkah with Chabad. It was so fun. We did candle lightings. We made latkes. Like they offer a lot of fun things. So um, yeah, there's a lot of opportunities to connect with Jewish experiences while you're abroad. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, another question that we got ahead of time. So I know you've talked a lot about like so many benefits of going on a gap year. A question that we got is if it's hard to go to college after a gap year, a year later than people your own age or what you've heard from participants in the past about that. Yeah, it's funny because um, I will say that the maturity level, like it's almost unfair. You're not, a lot of people think that there's this misconception that you're going to be behind, that, you know, all your peers that you know are great ahead of you and all, but the reality is, is that when you get to campus as a freshman, after having spent a year in Israel, the advantage you have is almost unfair. Um, you will have learned so much. You will have gained so many life experiences. Um, it will not be hard for you because you've fallen behind. If anything, it might be hard for you because you're so advanced. You'll have experienced so many things. Um, and you know, typically 18 year olds when they're living on their own for the first time, you're gonna go through those growing pains um, while you're in Israel. Um, add like, you know, cultural adjustment to that. It's not easy, it's not a walk in the park, but you get used to it. So um, I would say, you know, there are pluses and minuses, but overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly, the, the consensus is 
it's almost unfair the advantage I felt because I was so self-sufficient. I was so independent. I felt so capable. Um, even in the college classes that you'll have, the conversations you're able to have, the things you're able to bring to the table because you've had in-person life experience, international experience, living on another continent, you bring so much to those conversations um, from real world experience. So if anything, it is a monumental advantage. Amazing. Thank you so much. Wow. And yeah, it again, like I'm so excited about gap years, like feeling very convinced that gap years are like amazing and the answer um, to everything. So that's incredible. Um, I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about like maybe how Massas supports people um, like in terms of medical insurance and figuring all of that out once they're on the program for like health and safety. Yeah, sure. So medical insurance is part of every single program. So Israel only has four large medical providers. Every single person in the country is assigned to one of those providers. And unlike in the States where you have insurance and you have no idea which doctor is in network, da, 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 the whole thing. In Israel, all the doc, like if you have insurance, um, whatever insurance your program provides for you, every single doctor is in that clinic. So how it works is when, I'll give you an example. Let's say you're not feeling well and you need to go see a doctor. There are cl like clinics for all four providers on every corner, basically, and in every city in Israel. So um, what you'll what you'll do is you'll just make an appointment with your clinic and every single doctor there is in your network. So the doctors are connected to the insurance companies in Israel. So there's no confusion about it. You know, every single doctor in that clinic is part of your network. So it's not even a thing. I actually went to the doctor slash hospital like a couple of times when I was in Israel, not because I was sick, but just because I like tripped and fell because I'm stupid. <laughs> no, I'm not stupid, but I just, whatever, you get the point. Um, <laughs> and I never paid a dime. The Israeli health insurance is unbelievable. Um, I mean, I needed to go to the doctor like a couple of times just for random stuff. And it didn't cost, I never paid one cent the entire time I was in Israel. Everything is covered a hundred percent with your insurance. Um, it's not meant for pre-existing conditions. So if you need medication, you need to talk to your like doctor at home about making sure that you have what you need before you go. It's really intended for like, if you get sick when you're there, if something happens when you're there, if that's the case, you're covered at hundred percent and you won't have to worry about anything. Honestly, the health insurance in Israel is far none. It's incredible. Amazing, great. Um, <laughs> Great. Yeah. Pivoting a little bit. Um, I know like probably each program has like a little bit of a different application process, but can you talk a little bit about what people need to be prepared for when they're applying for gap year, a gap year experience or like what's on the application or something that they should know, or maybe some advice that you have for that process? Sure. The, you know, it's getting more as gap gets more and more popular, especially this year, it exploded. It's not just for those people that don't know what they want to do. It's actually, especially for people who do. Um, so you can hone in on the things you want to do. And so I would say um, most of the programs are going to have an interview process where you'll have an initial interview because for as much as you want to make sure the program is perfect for you, they want to make sure you're perfect for them too. Um, there is an interview process. A lot of times they'll ask for letters of recommendation from teachers, mentors, coaches. Um, they want to see that you have a community and that you, someone in your community can recognize your achievements or like the type of person you are. Um, it's not based on grades. So they don't ask for your transcript. It's not like applying to college. Um, you really have a clean slate in that way. Um, but they will expect that you are able to like fundamentally be able to hold a conversation. If you're in the middle of an interview and someone's like, tell me about that time you blah, blah, blah. And you say, it was good. They're going to think that you're unengaged, you're disinterested, and there are 10 other people that would much prefer to have that spot. So I would just say if you're thinking about the, uh, you know, the interview part, I would say have a little bit of chutzpah, be outgoing. Even if you're a shy person, be yourself, but don't be afraid to speak and answer questions because Israelis really, really value that. And if you're super quiet and you can't respond, and you'd be surprised how many 18-year-olds rely on their parents to respond for them, or they look to their parents to give them the answers for everything, that doesn't fly. So I was going to say a little bit of independence in this process is really necessary. Um, and if the parents want to be involved, they absolutely can be, but the applicant, him or herself has to be the one to like answer the questions and like show up to the process and be on top of the process. Awesome. Yeah, that's really helpful. Um, and I'll also use this as an opportunity for the Atlanta Israel Gap Year Scholarship application. It's pretty simple. There are just two essays that you'll need to submit. 
One is a pre-existing essay that you will have submitted with the college application. And then the second essay is just telling us about your Jewish journey so far and how going you feel that going on a gap year will influence you and your life. Um, and then asking some basic demographic questions. So if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out, let us know um, about that application as well. Um, awesome. I'm also, I, yeah. I was gonna say that is like the app, like what I just described is the application mm -hmm. that you experience when you're applying to the specific program. Once you've officially been accepted to the program and you come to masaisrael.org, that's how you apply for funding. Our funding application is literally like eight yes or no questions. Wow. It's just like, are you Jewish? It's just eligibility questions. Have you lived in Israel before? Are you Israeli? Like it's really simple and the, yeah, I mean, it's just yes or no question. So there's no interview. There's nothing crazy. Like it's literally a yes or no thing. And then you pick which program you're doing and then that's it. Like, it's really simple. That's really <laughs> great to hear. So it's like not a lot of extra work oh, um, not to get that scholarship. Amazing. Um, I guess I would love for you to share just like as we're closing out, maybe like one thing you wish you would have known before you spent your time on your MASA program. But a hard, that's a hard one. <laughs> hard, but it's also like, I, it's like everything I didn't know that made, shaped my experience and made it what it was. I would say, honestly, to be really open-minded about the cultural differences. I think until you move abroad, and Israel, by the way, is like a first world country, okay? Like it's so technologically advanced. The medical system is incredible. The emergency services are incredible. But the reality is it's still a foreign country when you're from the States. And um, I think a lot of students are shocked that they have to heat up water. Like there's a, a button in, on the wall in the apartment, you turn it and it heats up the water. So you can take a hot shower. It takes like 10 minutes, but it's not, but we're just so used to there being a boiler and it automatically being hot all the time. And like, what do you mean I have to heat up the water? Like it's these little small cultural things um, that I think that to remember that that's part of the experience that you're not in the United States, like you're in a foreign country for a reason. And those are the little things that you remember when you come back that are like, wow, I, I love this experience and look at how different it was. So I would just say to be open-minded about the fact that you're in a different country and that's why you're there and not to like complain about it, but just to like accept it and embrace it as part of the experience. Amazing. And that's really like where growth comes from, right? Like that exactly. Um, just like accepting these like new opportunities and experiences that are all coming your way um, when you're abroad. Um, Alyssa, thank you so much again for your time. Is there anything like last thing that you want to add or anything else or um, about how to contact you? I know that you put your Calendly link in the chat, but anything else? Um, I mean, I think that's about it. Um, I would say that I'm more than happy to do one-on-one -on -one, like con like concierge services, I guess you could say for anybody on the call. So um, please do not be a stranger, do not be shy. I will just really quickly um, share my um, email address one more time. Um, like, don't be afraid to reach out. I'm more than happy to answer questions. I'm happy to hop on any sort of call. Um, the calendar again. Yes, it's in the chat. I will um, put my link again in the chat. Um, Calendly.com slash Chicago slash Alyssa. Um, that's my link. Feel free to copy and paste it. Um, I'm more than happy to. Um... Yeah, so about it. Is there any, was, did anybody else have any other questions before we sign off? I know I covered a lot. Amazing. I don't see any other questions. But again, like if you have any questions now, I also put Alyssa's email in the chat. So you have it. You can also um, email us at JumpSpark. Um, and I'm going to go ahead also and put the link to our Atlanta Gap Year Scholarship in the chat as well so that you have it easily accessible. And if you're on Facebook tuning in, that is also in the event description. Um, thank you again, Alyssa, for such an informative hour. I feel like this was such a good overview of the program. Um, and of all the programs and what's offered. Um, and if you're interested again in learning more about our gap year scholarship and additional upcoming events that we are having to explore the different programs, you can visit our website, which again, I put in the chat and be sure to follow us on social media at JumpSpark ATL, where we'll be featuring a bunch of different programs that are all eligible for this gap year scholarship. Um, and we'll give you additional information on all of our programs. 
Um, bye, everyone. See you next time. Bye, Alyssa. Thank you. Thank you.